Good morning. Let's turn to the next candidate on our roll call of witnesses. And that, of course, is Thomas. Lord, we pray as we turn to your word, particularly this one, particularly the story of Thomas, that as we understand it, we may respond to it in the way that we live for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we've looked at Mary Magdalene as a witness to the resurrection and then the disciples more gen generally. So let's think about Thomas, because this is one of the classic pictures. In fact, we have this name, don't we? Doubting Thomas. Now, Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the 12, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples said, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. See my hands, reach out your hand, put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you've seen me, you've believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. And so we have a picture. As I say, he's called Doubting Thomas. But in a sense, in a sense, this guy is exhibiting a kind of integrity, certainly a sort of stubbornness. Imagine your 10 best friends tell you something. And you say, no, I have to know for myself. So you could say that's stubborn. You could say it's doubting, but it exhibits something else as well, doesn't it? A determination to know for yourself. Because this is so important. This is so vital that you get this right. This is literally life-changing stuff jesus is either risen or he's not if he's not risen i don't want to have anything to do with it i'm not here for an emotional charge i'm not here for a self-help exercise this is either historical or it's not historical if it's not historical then all of this is just a waste of time but if it's historical if it's real then i will give my life for it I think that was the rationale that Thomas was going through. And, and who can who can blame him? This is this is impossible. Dead people don't come back to life. Was it a delusion? Was it a, 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 a just looking through the misty morning and seeing something that wasn't there? Is that right? You can reach for these so-called rational explanations. But the claim of Christianity is that this is real. It's the central clay, Christianity. This is the central time of Christianity. And Thomas would not be bullied into believing by other people. And you've got to say amen to that. Because, you see, John has put his story here for a reason. And that is this, is that there are people like John himself. John saw and believed. That was the testimony at the beginning of the chapter. He saw and believed John. OK, maybe he's quicker, more intuitive. And Mary saw more and came back saying, I have seen the Lord. And so we get this same phrase here. The disciples saying we have seen the Lord. We've seen him. But here comes the point. You have to have that knowledge for yourself. Mary heard his voice. Mary knew that idea had to translate into heart knowledge and then as soon as it did then jesus said okay go and tell and it becomes it becomes a way of living of, of sharing good news but thomas hadn't got there yet hadn't got there yet he, he uh, so i have to see i have to know for myself and so jesus gives him what he wants now he acknowledges that the people like us who won't have the physical evidence in front of us are going to be more blessed he, he acknowledges that blessed are those who have not yet seen and yet have believed so we're in there 
but Jesus gave Thomas what he craved. Isn't that good? He has a right to ask. And Jesus said, okay, now the, there's blessing for those who go one step further, but I'm going to give you what you, because people like that, people like Thomas, they sort of standing on the outskirts of churches. And I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But once they are sure, then they are undefeatable. Amen. Absolutely solid. They become the rocks, the rock on which things are built. It's when Peter got it just for a moment. Jesus, you are the Messiah. You're the son of the living God. He said, blessed are you. Flesh and blood hasn't revealed this to you. My father in heaven, on this rock, on this revelation, on this insight and recognition of truth, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell will not, will not prevail against it. And that's what's going on here. So he gives Thomas what he wants. He tells him to stop doubting now and believe. If you doubt, you're double-minded. You're on shifting sand. Now you've got it, Thomas. Stay true. Lord, we pray. Lord, we pray that... Thank you, Lord, that you treat us according to our own like personalities and where we come from, and you bring us to where you are. Teach us, Lord. Show us how to live and that, that we may see and know for ourselves. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you today.